Get ready to take your printed circuit board assembly PCBA surface mount technology SMT process skills to the next level. In this video, I will review some of the most valuable and effective tips and techniques for consistently producing high quality products. We all know that surface mount technology can be a complex and challenging process, but with the right approach, you can achieve consistent results. With over 329 process control points, understanding key process controls in SMT is crucial. By the end of this video, you will master some key process controls in one of the SMT steps that will help you to achieve high quality component mounting resulting in consistently excellent products. So, back up and get ready to elevate your PCBA SMT process game. Let's take a dive into the world of PCBA SMT process and explore the areas that require utmost control to achieve consistently high quality products. Starting from incoming materials, we need to ensure that all electronic components, solder paste, printed circuit board, and other chemicals met the required standards. Then we move on to the crucial steps of paste printing and glue dispensing followed by placing all the components accurately onto the board. Finally, the board will go through the reflow process to form a perfect solder joint. To ensure quality, all boards will be inspected manually or using AOI. In this video, we will uncover the secrets of component placement process and how it plays the significant role in ensuring the quality of the final products. The component placement QPA checklist section has a total of 82 questions and the sections of the component placements includes the work instruction, the loading and verification of the component. This is one of the most critical component placement work where we have to ensure that the correct component are placed at the correct location with the correct polarity. It is highly critical and it's also very, very important or you will have the whole batch of the parts with either wrong value component mounted on the board or wrong orientation component mounted on a board. As the chip placement, the shooter is very fast and sometimes there could be thousands of boards being built and you will have the whole batch with this problem. The nozzles, the feeder and the tooling used to place the components. Component handling, especially those moisture sensitive devices. The placement process itself in the machine, the inspection of the board after placement, the attrition rate of the machine itself, and also the process capability record of the machine. In the work instruction, as usual, we wanted to verify if the revision control for the work instruction and contains the loading information for the specific product being built and the work instruction must be readily available to the operator and they should be followed at the component placement work area and the component parts numbers and description must be included in the work instruction specified for each part numbers of the PCBA and also the component description must be sufficiently detailed to check for the first article to ensure that the correct components are being used and the machine or head slot number for the component loading are also specified in each part number of the work instruction meaning that 
there should be a very detailed word instruction that lists down all the part numbers of the components that needs to be loaded onto the PCBA together with the machine head and the slot numbers because the dedicated machine heads will be for each type or each part number. And the reference designators and the quantity per part number must also be specified in the work instruction. The component feeder type and size must also be specified along with the work instruction together with the listing of the part number itself. The machine program name must also be specified in the work instruction or the line set out instruction must be available. If you want to uncover more secrets about the PCBA and SMT process, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the like button right now. By doing so, you won't miss any of my upcoming videos where I will review another process in PCBA which will enhance your skills in the printed circuit board assembly. Each and every component's part number that is loaded to the component machine must be recorded and it has to be recorded using an automatic barcode scanner means that the component reels or label itself must have a barcode and this barcode is in the scan when loaded to the machine to ensure that it's at the correct location per the program requirement and the component loading verification aids are linked to the placement program so that loading is verified against the program data means that which component to which slot must have the references itself to the program itself and the machine is able to verify like this is the correct component number for this slot number next is that the traceability of component lot codes must also be demonstrated according to the critical device where the customer and the manufacturer has to both agree on what are the critical components that needs to be tracked for the lot codes. Preferably, the current placement equipment or the machine should have a barcode of lot, lot codes and also it should be scanned and recorded in the machine itself. The component loading or changes has to be verified and cross-checked by an individual. Means that after a certain reels of component has been used up, there will be a new reels of component that is loaded to the slot and this item has to be cross-checked again by individual to ensure that it is the correct part number. Normally, this one is checked by the quality control operator, not the setup operator. That means it should be a second party check. The component loading or changes verification must be signed by the setup operator and countersigned by the cross checker before the startup again. As this is the point where usually it will cause a lot of problem when the reel has finished and a new component needs to be loaded in. We would like to ensure that if there is a correct component loading done based on the reel to the feeder loading. This means that the feeder loading of the component must load with the correct component per the slot number. Is there a first build box that verify against the documentation before the mass production run? It's one first board that should go through the loading process and then this first board must be checked against the documentation or the list 
of the components per the work instruction, there should also be a check for missing or misplay component and the correct component polarity. Do you want to learn the secrets to achieving top quality products in SMT PCBA? Look no further than my expert course on process control and quality auditing for the PCBA SMT at Udemy. With my comprehensive course, you will gain invaluable insights into more than 300 and 20 control points from incoming materials, paste printing, glue dispensing, placement, reflow, inspection that are required to achieve consistently high quality results, particularly for advanced applications in electronics, automobile and beyond. Enrolling in my Udemy course is the perfect way to take your skills and knowledge to the next level. You will receive a complete QPA checklist for mastering the PCBA SMT process audit and control, along with in-depth explanations that cover all aspects of QPA checklist. Plus, with this affordable online format, you can learn at your own pace and on your own schedule, making it easier than ever to invest in your future. Click on the link below or scan the QR code to enroll today. It's recommended that the first article is conducted using the AOI methods and also complemented with the description verification and the value metering as well. That means that for those resistors and capacitors, there should be a monitoring or a measurement of the value to ensure that this is the right component in the verification of the first article. All resistors and capacitors must be measured for a value that is between tolerance, one per part number at the first articles and also at the real change to double, triple confirm that this is the correct component at the right location of the PWB or else it will be very disastrous as the mass production will give up the whole batch of wrong component bought. The first article log must be signed and also verified for acceptance before startup and the orientation of some devices such as titanium as empty capacitors diodes even some ic's has to be standardized documented for the plurality of orientation or you will have a bot with wrong orientation being built the whole batch of it and sometimes an smt run could run for a thousand plus bots the IC tray loading must have a polarity standardized to each type L with easy to identify polarity indicator for each of these components and make sure that it is also mistake proof that will be the best practice. And the loading polarity must be referenced to both tray and the component to ensure that the retray components are also correctly loaded as well. Next is we want to focus on the nozzle feeders and the tooling used for the component placement and there should be a document which details the standardized nozzle diameter setup selected for each type of component for the placement equipment means that there should be a very systematic approach that what size component should use what diameter of the nozzle and the standardized nozzle diameter setup documents is also must be readily available for when the nozzles need to be replaced or changed to ensure that this is the correct nozzle or the chip placement equipment or the chip placement process will not be effective either the component will 
not be placed on the correct location precisely or the component will go missing. And there should be a document which details the components X, Y, Z body sizes, the dimension of the component for each selected nozzle types to ensure that it can be successfully placed, especially now the component is getting very, very tiny. Therefore, slightly off alignment, the component will, need, will not be placed precisely on the pad location as required. The document also should specify that the nozzle should be centered daily and the evidence or the records needs to be captured that this has been done to ensure that the nozzle does not shift and it will cause the component to misalign on the board. The feeder that is used for the reel must also have its unique serial number. There are many, many feeders, in fact, thousands of feeders that is available in the component placement process for uh, SMT shop floor. Therefore, each and every feeder, no matter how many has been used, has to have a unique serial number for traceability purposes. There should be an effective feeder maintenance program. Then, and the record must be by the feeder serial number, means that each and every feeder must have a PM record. And this must use a computerized system to store those records and not manually. The database record must be maintained for each of these feeder serial number. And for the purpose of tracking maintenance, history, and performance, it must be easily retrievable. The feeder's maintenance history must be used to monitor the feeder life so that problematic feeders can be removed from the process immediately. Because problematic feeders will either cause a missing component, skip component on the printed circuit board. The manufacturer must demonstrate that the number of feeder indexes is counted and monitored for each unique feeder using a software. This is where I say that there must be a software preventive maintenance records being used. The software must easily flag that the feeder already needs preventive maintenance as there's so many feeders and it's impossible to do it manually, especially for those manufacturers with more than five or six SMT line. That there should be also a requirement to state what are the blocks and support pin that is used to support the bare board during the placement of the component for specific part numbers or products. The number, the location, the height of the support blocks and pin must also be identified product by product basis. The support pin location for each product must be verified using a template or tooling or some other effective solution to ensure that it is at the correct location. I hope you have gained valuable insights into the critical process control measures required for achieving consistent high quality results in the SMT process. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share with others who want to enhance their skills and shape their future. If you are ready to take your printed circuit board assembly surface mount technology skills to the next level, enroll in my expert course on Udemy. You will gain access to a complete QPA checklist with an in-depth
in-depth explanation covering you will gain access to a complete QPA checklist with in-depth explanation covering all the 329 control points of QPA questions. I look forward to seeing you in the course.